Working on a 2001 Ford Ranger with a 3.0 liter engine. This is a California model emission vehicle. Not that that matters for what we're doing. I'm gonna call this part two. Uh, you guys have seen my part one video which addresses the EGR insufficient flow. And uh, this video we are going to address the P0340 cam position sensor circuit fault. This particular engine is known for cam sensor faults with what they call the synchronizer. It sits way back here and it looks like a uh, distributor shaft that really, we, we always call them dummy shaft distributors. It would drive the, um, that actually is driven off the cam itself and also drives the oil pump, which is why they kept that design. And all it does is instead of driving a distributor, it just drives a window of a Hall Effect. Uh, Hall Effect or variable reluctance sensor, one of the two. Um, this, that can actually be determined by the number of wires. Let me just take a peek real quick, see how many we have. Okay, so this is a two, this is a two wire design. So that makes an AC sine wave. Uh, this would be section 21 material in my book for you guys that are following along and that is available at scannerdanner.com. Section 21, we deal with ignition inputs. That's what this is. We have a cam sensor fault. I think the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that's a hard fault and I'm going to clear the codes. And then what we'll do is reread them. I'll do the key on engine off self test first. And what the key on engine off self test does is it does checks on certain inputs and outputs. You hear it just cycle the AC clutch and it'll run the fuel pump and do some other cool stuff. So no faults there. I don't expect it to recognize the cam fault with a key on engine off test. So what we'll do now is we will do the key on engine run self test or we'll just start the car and look for pending codes. Uh, the run test, I'm gonna skip that because this engine's not warmed up and the run test makes me warm the engine up. I'm not doing that. So I'm just starting the truck. So uh, now with this truck running, I'm going to go to the pending code section. We got no fault at the moment. I'll let this run for a minute. that it didn't set a pending code in that section but we can see that I have a cam sensor code now under memory uh, this so this is a hard fault this is happening right now this will not be a problem to troubleshoot at all uh, unfortunately for you guys that don't have a scope this is one area where you really need one to be a hundred percent I'm going to hook up the scope to this and just see if I have a waveform on this sensor Okay, you guys hear that, you hear that chirping, uh, that is the serpentine valve. Sometimes you'll get a mistake and the chirping that you start hearing sounds like a bell and it ends up being the cam sensor, that's really annoying. Okay, no way I can deal with that noise, that was ridiculous. Uh, what I'm doing is going to my home tab and I'm going to my... Well, let's see, for this one, we can just go to the scope multimeter and I'm using a graphing meter. And what I wanna do is set my tool up on volts DC. And uh, I like a 20, well, for this sensor, I'm gonna go down to five volts. We may alter that. It's an AC sine wave, so I'm moving my zero line up into the middle. A 10 second screen is fine to start with. We'll probably adjust that. No, we'll definitely be adjusting that. 
And then um, a known good ground is what I need to be connected to. I am up on the firewall for my ground. Can you see where I put it? Right there, it's the top of the screen. Uh, before I do any checks though, I have to make sure that I have a good ground. And so I have the key on. Let me just back probe this ignition coil. I know there should be 12 volts here. And you see my screen, it went off the scale. Let's go back to 20 volts and let you guys see that number. Move my zero line down. All right, so how is my ground? My ground is good, 11.9 volts. So battery's a little weak on this or my ground is poor. That's a good ground, battery's weak, no big deal. All right, so this, this lead now, I'm going right to the cam sensor, synchronizer, or um, yeah, whatever you wanna call it, synchronizer, cam sensor. Back here, I'm gonna connect to it, let you guys see my connections. So that's the connector. And if I can move this harness, can't really get behind it. There it is right there. So see the two rusty bolts on top of that black round plastic cover? That's the top of the synchronizer or cam sensor. And then the connector is right there. So I'm back probing this wire and then I'll get a signal and then we'll move it over to the other wire and look at a signal again. Starting the truck. You'll have to ignore the noisy fan for a second, or the fan belt. Okay, as you can see on the screen, we have no signal at all. So we'll go to the next wire. There is the other wire, no signal again. Let me shut this off. Okay, so for this one, pretty common that these sensors fail. I have no problem telling my friend here that it needs a cam synchronizer. And what we're going to do is the whole assembly because these are known for issues. Now it could just be the sensor on top and they do sell them separately, but for me to know, I would have to unbolt the top of that and look at it and make sure there's not damage. These are known for damage. I'm not messing around with it. We're changing the whole piece. So we're putting a whole uh, synchronizer assembly into it. Uh, as far as, I know some of you guys are thinking that, um, is there any other checks we can do on the scan tool? Well. I don't have a data parameter on this. I don't think I do. Let's look real quick. And what I'm getting at is creating a signal to verify wiring integrity, create a signal and look for a computer response. I don't think I have that option on this one. I looked under drivability and emissions already and fuel well, let's do them together real quick. Let's just make sure we don't have a cam PID. And that stands for parameter identification, PID, P-I-D. You hear me use that word a lot. So looking for a cam signal. Some of you may be wondering how this car runs without a cam sensor. Some of these systems have the ability to do that and it really has to do with whether or not the crank sensor has a sync notch in it. This one does. Again, that is information that I have in my classroom stuff on my premium channel, section 21, 22. If you guys are not a part of it yet, you need to be. Lots of info there. No cam needed on this thing to run. It runs into a default mode. So that was drivability, going to emissions. Just looking for a cam pid because I want to try to do a bypass test, I'm not going to be able to show you that on this. And I've done enough Ford cam sensors with no signal at the sensor, I'm putting a part in it. I'm okay with that. Sometimes... experience dictates your next move. Now granted, we could plug in a hypothetical that this signal could be shorted to ground, the wiring could be shorted to ground. Picture the sensors here and the computers here. So in this little section of wire, but the thing is on a Ford, I've never seen it. I'm not 
I'm not worried about it. We could do some quick checks on the harness if we have to. I'm not feeling the need to. An open wire would not cause it. That sensor produces its own voltage. I measured it at the sensor, no signal. So not worried about an open, just a short to ground. We could do a quick test for a short to ground to keep you guys happy. If I wasn't filming, I wouldn't do it. Needs a cam sensor right now at this point. No signal measured at the sensor. It needs a cam sensor. I'll put a link in here for some other bypass tests that I've done. Maybe a playlist. Of course, we had a big diesel truck coming. Shut that thing off. Nope. No cam count on any of my pits. Tranny, accessories. It's not going to be in here, but I'll check it. Speed, that's transmission stuff. Nope, one more. Nothing. All right, so scan tool is not going to uh, be much more of a benefit to us. Uh, the last part would be. There's a couple ways we can do this. We can disconnect the computer, disconnect the sensor, and do some ohm checks short to grounds. Those are easy to do um, on this model, not on some cars, because you got to dig the computer out. So I don't want to use that method. Uh, the method I want to use is my test light. After my connector, kind of wedge it in between the uh, spark plug wire there so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, now some of this, this is variable, this test. Uh, some of these sensors will use a constant ground and other ones will use a floating ground. I'm pretty sure Ford uses a floating ground. So here's what I don't wanna see. When I do this test, I do not wanna see my test light light. Okay, so test light is connected to battery positive and what I want is for my light to light. Let me find a ground that you guys can see. camera it's raining on me again okay so light is lit when I find a ground when I touch this sensor I don't want to see it light some of them it's okay for one wire to light it's not okay for the other one to light if it does not light on either one no light on that one Let me move my hand okay no light there one more and I'm not stuffing it in there I got a light on one side. I am okay with a light on one side, not both. What that means is I was incorrect about this being a floating ground design that is grounded inside of the computer. And now I have to prove it to you guys. I don't have a choice. I gotta finish this. I'm gonna unbolt this connector. That light should go out. That's gonna verify my harness. Okay, I turned the key off. I gotta do this quick, my camera's getting wet. Key is off because I need to unbolt this connector. Kinda nice, my test light's kinda rigged up there. Would've had to do this, unplug it on the computer to do an ohm check, see that light just go out. That is grounding inside the computer. No problems with this circuit at all. Wiring is fine, needs a cam sensor. No signal at the sensor, can, measured at the sensor, can only be caused by a faulty sensor or a short to ground in the wiring in this case. Now you could say no movement in the inside. Yeah, if the timing chain was broken or something like that, it wouldn't be rotating that synchronizer. Not the case, the car runs. We bolt this back up, watch that ground come back. One ground on a VRS is good. 
two grounds wiring sorted out. Okay. I'm good. Bad cam sensor. So on this one, let's see, all you needed to troubleshoot this, well, we did need a scope. I'll put a link in here for an inexpensive scope for you do-it-yourselfers out there. No reason to go out and buy a Varus. Uh, we can get a little handheld single channel uh, U-scope from my friends over at AES. You know, those are inexpensive. That's an option that will give you the ability to read that. Now you could, we could make the argument that you could have checked that with an AC setting on your voltmeter, but I don't like that because it's such a small signal at times and it can be difficult to read. So um, that's it, faulty cam sensor on a 2001 Ford Ranger.